As a developer, writing copy is not my cup of tea. Take this headline for example, should it say browse our products, or product listing, or maybe just products, and same goes for the description underneath. And what's worse is that this text isn't very easy to change. Someone who has access to the source code needs to actually edit the HTML and then issue a redeploy, just to change a little wording. Instead, it would be nicer if there was some kind of easy to use admin interface where even the client could go in and edit the copy. And that brings us to CopyCopter. This provides a nice interface where the client can do the editing and it has a Ruby gem that you can use to integrate easily into a Rails application. So this used to be a paid service, but ThoughtBot recently open sourced it so it's free for you to use. Let me show you how. First, you'll need to set up the CopyCopter server. So this is a complete Rails application that provides the interface for editing the copy. So this is not a mountable engine, which means you'll need to deploy and host this separately from your main Rails application. Fortunately, Heroku is a perfect fit for this. CopyCopter will work nicely on one dyno, so you can host it for free here. Just go to heroku.com and click sign up to get started. After you complete the sign up process, you'll need to install the Heroku tool belt, which provides a command line interface for managing your apps. Just select your operating system, download it, and then run the installer. After it's done installing and you open a new terminal window, you'll have access to the Heroku command where you can type Heroku login and then your credentials to set it up for this system. There we go, now we're authenticated, so let's deploy CopyCopter server to Heroku. If you check out the GitHub project, you'll find some documentation in the readme for deploying it to Heroku. I'll be following these commands here. First, I'll clone the project onto my local machine here, and then change into that directory. And now we're ready to deploy to Heroku by running this command provided by the readme. Now, depending on your setup, you may get an error like I just did here. To solve this, we can run bundle install, and you may want to run this without the test environment to reduce the number of gem dependencies. Now we can try running that command again to set up Heroku. Now the way Heroku works is you deploy using git, so we can run git push Heroku master to deploy the application. And next we can run migrations on the server using Heroku run rake db migrate. And then run Heroku restart. And now we can make a copycopter project by running this command. We just have to fill in the variables. So I'll give this project a name of store. And for my username, I'll do Ryan B. And for the password, I'll just do secret. Now let's check out the site we just deployed by running Heroku open. So this opens it up in the browser and you can see it's running on Heroku. And if we click on store here to access our project, we'll get authentication dialog where we type in our credentials that we uh, typed in earlier. And then it tells us that we don't have a Rails application set up for this project yet, but it gives us some nice instructions for setting it up. We just have to add this to our gem file and then add an initializer with this content in it. So let's follow those instructions and add CopyCopter to this store application. So I'll just go into the gem file for this app. And then at the bottom here, I'll just paste in the content that it was provided for adding the CopyCopter client gem. And then you'll need to run the bundle command to install it. And then under the config initializers directory, I'll make a new file under here called a copycopter.rb. And this is where the configuration code goes that was provided to hook up our Rails application to the copycopter server that was deployed. So now with copycopter set up, we just need to make this headline and this tagline underneath editable through copycopter. To do this, go into the view template and replace the text with a call to the T method and pass in some kind of unique key to identify it. So let's call this products.headline. And then we can also pass in a default value just in case it's not set through a copycopter. Now this T method is actually Rails's built-in internationalization, and that's what copycopter goes through. So you can use copycopter to do translations on your site as well. Now let's do the same thing we have here, but I want to show you something a little bit different, and that is you can pass in a relative key in here by, def by prefixing it with a period. So we could say a tagline here, and the key will be prefixed with uh, the path to the template, so it'll be unique to this template. So let's also pass in a default value of what was there before. Now you may need to restart your application to load in CopyCopter, but once you do and then reload the page, it should look the same because it's using the default values. But now when we visit our CopyCopter project again, we get a search dialog where we can 
search for a key. So let's type in a headline. And then we can see there's that products.headline key we set up with the value of browse products. So we can replace this with, uh, let's say, browse our products instead. Now you have the option to either make it a draft or publish it. So publishing it will make it visible in the production environment. A draft will not. So we can just make it a draft. So let's save the blurb. And since we're running in development, I'll just reload this page here. And there it says browse our products instead of browse products. It works. Next, let's do a search for the tagline. And there's our tagline translation that we added. And notice that it's prefixed with products.index because we started it with a period in our Rails application. And also, I want to point out that you can make different things bold or italic. And you can also change the locale here if you want to choose a different language to translate it into. So this is really neat. It's a nice little way to edit your copy for your Rails app. Now, one CopyCopter server can manage multiple projects. So if you have another site, you can just add it as a separate project to CopyCopter by running this command again and just changing the values. Well, that's it for this episode on CopyCopter. So if you're tired of editing your copy and having to redeploy each time, give it a try. In the pro episode this week, I continue our look into deployment and show you how to make Capistrano recipes to help manage your server setup. This way you can deploy a server completely from scratch in just a few commands. To watch that episode and all other pro and revised episodes, just head on over to railscast.com pro and then sign up there for just $9 per month.